Coming up this week on Winchester Deadly Passion, Melissa Bachman travels halfway around the world on a quest for one of New Zealand's most majestic animals, the red stag. Returning for a second time to the North Island, she has invited two friends from Field and Stream to join her on this hunt of a lifetime. And to make things even better, a healthy supply of game in the area means there may be more than stag on the menu. There are certain places in the world that are just such an incredible destination that I'd love to go to them whether I'm hunting or not. And New Zealand is one of those places. Now, a couple years ago, I had the privilege to go there on an archery hunt and just had a wonderful time. Got an absolutely giant stag and I couldn't wait to go back. Now on this trip, I'm going back to the North Island of New Zealand once again, but this time I'm bringing some of my friends from Field and Stream stores. Now these guys have never been there before and it was on both of their lists to go to New Zealand and enjoy everything they have to offer. The travel to New Zealand is interesting. Coming from Pennsylvania, Justin and I had four flights that we had to take, let alone we had to drive at the end because we happened to miss a flight. So we, uh, we added a little bit of time to our travel. But in the end, when you get here and you can see this landscape, you get to see all this wildlife. It's just such a beautiful place. It's very rewarding, and it's worth the time spent to get over to New Zealand. Now, where we were going to be heading was with Tony Punch. He has Rada Marie deer, and he has one incredible operation. But what makes this area a little bit different? Well, it is in some extremely thick timber. Most of New Zealand is just kind of rolling hills, just nice, easy terrain. And his area, well, it is up and down, and it is extremely thick. Now, that can make the hunting quite difficult as well because you cannot necessarily see where all these stags are or the fallow deer or all the other animals that he has there. But they are there, and if you are willing to put in the time, it is one incredible hunt. So when we first came into camp, we wanted to make sure our guns were sighted in, which we, we always do on every flight. Tony has a nice range right by the creek below the camp, and all three of us went down there. We, we shot our guns in. We were all feeling confident. I've got two of them in the same hole. We're shooting at right around 100 yards, so I'm about an inch high. Should be perfect. I've got the Winchester XPR. I'm going to shoot a 300 wind mag with a 180 grain bullet. I'm using the ballistic silver tips. Really like using those on something bigger like a red stag, so should work good on red stag, fallow deer, whatever it is. But just nice to be over here in the great weather and can't wait to get out hunting. When most people go to New Zealand, well, they're thinking of red stag because that is what they're known for. And on this trip, we were going to be coming in just before the roar really got going. We have heard them in the distance. We saw some up close. It's starting to take off, and as the cooler in the mornings get and the cooler the evenings get, the louder the, the roar. And it's something that, that I've never heard before. I mean, it, it almost sounds like a dinosaur. It, it's just, it is something spectacular to hear and, and, and added to the adventure. I had been there before, but most of those stags were in bachelor groups. This time, we were going to be hitting it right before the roar took place. So I figured we'd still see some of those big, big stags pushing some of the hinds around. Now, as we got there, well, that was absolutely the case. The trouble is, we couldn't necessarily see everything that was going on because of the thick timber. But it is pretty incredible to be out there in that 
bright morning sun and hear those stags roar, it really does make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. This segment was brought to you by Sportsman's Alliance. Our heritage, our fight. Protecting hunting from coast to coast. Did you know that Colorado became the 38th state to enact the U.S. Sportsman's Alliance's Families of Field legislation, which allows newcomers to hunt under the supervision of an experienced mentor prior to completing their hunter education course. It's resulted in nearly 1.5 million apprentice hunting licenses sold since 2006. Colorado's version allows anyone 10 years of age or older to obtain a hunter's apprentice license in order to give hunting a try. Just another fun fact showing how sportsmen and women are helping make a difference. Just because I had been to New Zealand before, this was going to be a totally different hunt. This time we were going to be hunting the big timber. We were going to be hunting with Tony Punch of Rotter Marie Deer, and he has an absolutely beautiful operation. The lodge is so accommodating, and he is just such a great person, and I knew we were going to be in great hands. And we had wide open country to go to. We're just excited to uh, experience this sort of hunt. It's something completely different than Pennsylvania. Uh, I honestly, I didn't know what to expect when I came down here. I thought it you know, would be rolling hills, easy hiking, but honestly coming down here, I, I think it definitely kicked my butt. The trouble is, well, you gotta get all the way to the top to get the best view of it. So that's exactly where we went. Now this was a lot more physical hunt than most people would probably think of in New Zealand. Uh, it's definitely not rolling hills. It's definitely not open. We made some serious climbs to the top of these mountains and through thick timber. And yeah, we did see a lot of game, but we had to work hard to get our eyes on that game. It was tough climbing and tough hiking. We were all young, we were all in good shape, and we thought, let's really put all of our gear and ourselves to the test and see what we can do. So each day our goal was to get up as high as possible, glass the area looking for animals. Now as far as animals, each of us had a wide variety we could take, but the two main things we wanted were a fallow deer and a stag. Now I wasn't so concerned about getting both. What I really wanted is for both Justin and John to get beautiful animals. So I said, you guys are up first. First we're rolling. Uh, day one here on the hunt in New Zealand, the afternoon, where uh, we saw a couple fallow deer earlier. I think we're gonna work our way back the road and see if we can uh, see if we can get on them, get up high on them and, uh, and sneak down over the edge and, and see if we can get a crack at them. So stay tuned. So I was lucky enough to draw the, the first shooting position when we got to camp here at Rotter Marie Deer. And uh, the first night out, we, uh, we spotted a very nice fallow buck. All of us, uh, we, we circled around it once, went all the way back of the property and, and decided that that was a good one and we should take him before uh, before it gets too dark. So we worked our way back, got above them. That's what you do here in New Zealand is you get above the animals and work down to them. And uh, we didn't see him. Uh, we sat there for a while and we thought he was gone. And we were getting up to, to kind of head off the mountain to head in for the evening. And Teeter, the cameraman, spotted him. John Stack was up, he got ready, we're all getting in position to take the shot. And unfortunately, the first one, it didn't connect. Nothing. Miss. So that kind of added to the adventure of the hunt. Uh, we all got up and re repositioned ourselves. You want him? Got another shot another miss and we're like holy cow we're all running around scrambling and all of a sudden we got a third shot which was pretty incredible Whew. thank goodness <laughs> dropped that fallow deer right in his tracks but in the end we were just all so happy well welcome to new zealand <laughs> well thank you that's awesome the first animal in new zealand 
What a beautiful fellow. What a nice way to start off the trip. Yeah. You wow. know what, took a little bit to get him down, but we got him. And then we had to take the hike over here to get him, but well, was it worth it? This is a, what a beautiful animal. He is awesome. This segment was brought to you by Boss Buck. For the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market, choose Boss Buck Feeders. Now you're getting serious. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Cutty Back Digital. More deer, fewer blanks. Hard-hitting Easton Arrows. Hunter's Safety System. Winchester Repeating Arms. Analogics, protect your deer herd with the power of science. Scent killer gold with hunt dry technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. Sportsman's Alliance, protecting hunting from coast to coast. Engel Coolers, the original high performance cooler company. And Golden Triangle Whitetail, your hunt of a lifetime awaits. When people think of New Zealand, well, you think of rolling hills, beautiful sights, and incredible animals, and all that is there. But for me on this trip, it was gonna be even more than that. I had already been there. I knew what a wonderful place it was gonna be, but this time, I was bringing some friends along. I was bringing my good friends, John Stack and Justin <laughs> Long from Field and Stream, and we were all three gonna go over there and experience this adventure together. So we've been planning this trip for quite a while, and we were, Absolutely excited that Melissa invited us to come down with her uh, and chase some stag and also have an opportunity at some fallow deer. Now one of our main goals on this trip was having them bring in new products and all of us test them out right in the field. I buy all the gear that we're out here testing today and let me tell you when you get a chance to come out in the field and actually putting the goods to work, it's a, it's a lot more fun than sitting in the office every day and spending camp with Justin. Who, uh, who also works on the field and stream team and bouncing ideas back and forth. It, it works out in the long run because we're gonna take some good notes back and we're gonna be able to improve the product for our customers in the stores. And that's one of the incredible things about field and stream is they are always trying to make things better. They don't wanna just take their word that they've got the best stuff. They've got it pretty good, but there's always room for improvement. So we were testing out all the gear. We're putting it through the ringer, trying to figure out how it could be better, how it could be more functional, and in the end, it creates a better product. Plus, we were all pretty excited about where we were gonna be testing it. You can't hardly beat New Zealand. With one fallow deer down, we decided new game plan. If we see a stag, well, I was supposed to be up. If we see another fallow deer, Justin was up. Now, as we were up watching, well, we spotted a stag moving through the area and we thought, wow, awesome. So we went right off the edge, now I was up. Now my heart was pounding because I thought, this is it, this is a beautiful stag, we're gonna get in position. We split up, John and Justin stayed up high, they were filming with the small camera. We went down below and by the time we got set up, that stag was just a little too far over. I had brush in my way and I decided to let him walk. I probably could have pushed through that shot and made it happen, but I just wasn't comfortable. We were breathing hard from running, and unfortunately, we just couldn't catch up to him. It's been a lot of fun. That was super exciting. One nice close encounter, perfect in range, but just wasn't comfortable with the shot, so we've got time to we'll make it work. So between John and I, we, we tried to trade off. He had the opportunity to shoot a nice fallow deer. Uh, so the second day was my turn. Now, even though most people think of red stag when they think of New Zealand, the fallow deer are absolutely beautiful as well. Now, as we were going, we spotted a fallow deer almost out in the shadows and we thought, perfect opportunity. That's a fallow deer right across the ridge. We're gonna see if they're gonna work their way towards us. Work their way in a little opening. I think we got about a 200 yard shot. That's awesome. We all got quickly set up, got into position, and all we had to do is just wait for that big fallow deer to step out of the shadows. Perfect. 
perfect shot. Drops this deer right in his tracks. Well, here he is. He tumbled down quite a ways. Oh boy, that's awesome. Wow, look at oh how my chocolate gosh. those horns are. Beautiful. Definitely excited to get my first fallow buck. Just beautiful. To see those fallow bucks, it's really, really neat to know that everything came together. We had a big group out there. It was an awesome experience, and I was so happy. It has been just an incredible trip so far. Tip of the Week is brought to you by Field & Street. Trusted brands, timeless traditions. When you're hunting overseas, it's easy to forget about the basics when it comes to scouting. Sure, you're going to be going to a new area and you're primarily going to be relying on a guide, but I always like to do my part as well. Now, one of the most important scouting tools that I have, I'd say are probably my cuttybacks, and I'm always bringing them along, even on my international hunts. In the past, I've traveled to Africa and I put them at water holes, trying to get kind of an idea of what type of animals were coming into that area and at what time. I also brought them on my first trip to New Zealand, and of course, I brought them along on this trip. So every time we headed out, I made sure to have a couple of cuttybacks in my pack. Now, we all knew that the roar was gonna be getting closer and closer, and the stags were probably gonna be changing their patterns, so we wanted to ensure that we were hunting in the best locations and at the right time. We hung the cameras in high traffic areas, pinch points, at water holes, and even on rubs, just like you would if you were whitetail hunting. Now, not only did we get some incredible photos, but the pictures really helped us decide which location to hunt and whether the mornings or the evenings would be the most productive. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews Archery, catch us if you can. Field and Stream, where traditions begin. ScoutLookWeather.com. Download the free Deer Log app for your smartphone. Reinhardt, the best archery targets in the world. Sure Shot Jewelry. Check out the Melissa Bachman collection today. And Boss Buck, for the most user friendly and dependable feeder on the market. Now you're getting serious. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. Upgrade to Cuddyback, and your images will never look better. I'm pretty sure all the areas of New Zealand are absolutely beautiful, but where we were going on this trip was on the North Island, and it was a little bit different than places I had seen before. Normally in New Zealand, you've got just beautiful rolling hills, and you can see for a long way. But at Tony's place, it is big timber, and I'm talking thick trees and very, very steep conditions. Now it can be pretty awesome because you can use those trees and that steep conditions to your advantage. And once you spot something, you've got so many things to put in between you and make the stop. Well, we're here in New Zealand and we're actually going to put out these cuttybacks. Now I brought six of these cameras along with me. And what I like about it is they're really small. They're all running on AA batteries. Now a lot of people think when you travel to these other destinations that cameras aren't important. But we want to know when these deer and when these stags are coming through at different times. That way we can plan accordingly. Should be some pretty cool photos. Not exactly your regular whitetail photos, but I'm pretty excited. Well, as we went out, we got on three beautiful stakes. And we just couldn't catch up to them. I wanted it right up close and personal, and I knew we could do it, just might take a little more hard work. Finally, we got it within probably 180 yards. I had my shot, three beautiful stags. I picked out the one I was gonna shoot, shot, miss. Thought you've got to be kidding me. Jacked another shell in, got on him, miss again, and these stags were gone. I couldn't believe it. I was finally up, all my hard work, and I blew it. So after my miss, I decided to go back, shoot my gun again. It was off, I got it back dialed in, and I 
was excited to go back out because I knew we had several stag tags left to fill and we even could have a chance at another fallow deer. Either way, we were having just a wonderful time. New Zealand is so beautiful and being able to go over there to hear the roar, to see animals that you may have never seen before, well that really does make it one amazing experience. An experience that lasts a lifetime. Unfortunately, for Melissa and the rest of the crew, this trip won't last as long as the memories. With time winding down, they are forced to make some bold moves or risk leaving without a stag. The good news, quit isn't in their vocabulary and more hardcore hunting is on the horizon. This is Winchester Deadly Passion. This episode, Melissa was hunting with Tony Punch of Rata Myri Deer. To book your New Zealand adventure, visit ratamyri-deer.com and tell them Melissa sent you. Follow Melissa on Twitter at Melissa Bachman, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Winchester Deadly Passion, and Instagram at Melissa underscore Bachman for behind the scenes footage, photos, giveaways, and much more.